100 million developers on GitHub, a ton of stuff about Mastodon, a DIY project for the Octocat lover in all of us, and a pick of the week that will delight every 90s kid or kid at heart. All that and more on this episode of The Download. Welcome back to another episode of The Download. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Developer Advocate at GitHub. And this is the show where we cover the latest developer news and open source projects. Please like and subscribe. And uh, my shirt this week is GitHub. And that's for good reason, because we've got a lot to celebrate. So let's just get into it. There are now more than 100 million developers from around the world using GitHub. Yes, this is huge, huge news, and it's a really big milestone for us as a company, and we couldn't have done it without all of you, so thank you very much. Back in 2019, GitHub set a goal to have 100 million developers on the platform um, and uh, by 2025, and so depending on how you count, we're either two or three years ahead of schedule. Either way, we're ahead, so that's fantastic. GitHub launched about 15 years ago, and as our CEO Thomas said in um, the blog post announcing all of this, I've got that link down below, naturally, the concept of who and, and you know who a developer was back in 2007, 2008, was a lot different than it is today. Today, the meaning of the word developer is a lot more diverse than it was before, and I honestly think that's really great. I joined GitHub as a user back in 2009. I was like user 110,000 or something. And back then, even though I was joining a literal code repository platform, imposter syndrome and a lot of other factors would have made me question whether I could even call myself a developer. And I've been coding since I was a kid. But you can do so much more than just raw code on GitHub. You can contribute to open source projects in ways that are beyond code, contributing to documentation, design, even just by filing bugs and feedback. It's really great. And uh, developers on GitHub are increasingly from all over the world. You know, back in 2016, a third of all of our users were in North America, but now we've got millions of developers and users in India, Brazil, and Africa, and, and this is just fantastic. And so, as Thomas says in his blog, GitHub is the home for all developers, and we really feel that responsibility and that mission. And we are so thankful for all of you who've joined us along the way and for all the new developers yet to come. Here's to 100 million more developers. Okay, moving on to some other cool GitHub news. There are some new extension tools for the GitHub CLI. Now, what's the GitHub CLI, you might ask? Well, it is a really great way to interact with GitHub from your terminal. And since version 2.0 launched in August of 2021, there's been extension support so that you can do even more things with the CLI. And since that 2.0 launch, the team has been hard at work building and shipping new features for extension users and authors. And in the new GitHub CLI 2.20 release, there are a couple of new things that are really cool. So the first is called GH Extension Browse, and it makes it really easy to discover new extensions. So you just type GH EXT Browse into your terminal emulator of choice, and you'll see a really attractive and browsable directory of GitHub extensions. And you can install the extensions right from the interface. It uses Vim commands to make everybody feel at home. Uh, and if you just want to search for an extension and not have that uh, TUI interface, you can use the ghxt search command, uh, and it's going to show you the first 30 extensions for your query based on star count in just a, a, a simple text prompt. Um, also, check out the, the GH screensaver extension that uh, I installed. You can see this video here. It makes a really pretty screensaver in your terminal. Neat. All right, I've got a link to the blog post down below, and I've also linked to a bunch of great GitHub CLI extensions so that you can browse them in your web browser if, if you want to do that down below. Moving on, let's talk about Mastodon. So Mastodon, if you are not familiar, is part of the so-called Fediverse, and it is a decentralized social platform, much like Twitter, but instead of having one centralized instance, there are lots of instances dedicated to certain communities. You can even roll your own. And because it uses a open source protocol called ActivityPub, you can publish and ingest content in lots of cool ways. Mastodon has been around for about six years, and it's open source, but it's really gained a lot of interest in recent months because of like all the Twitter drama. And I haven't talked much about Mastodon on this show, frankly, because I was still in denial that Twitter would not be impacted by its new management, but the decision last week to kill third-party Twitter clients, you know, it made it feel like it was a good time for me to give Mastodon a better look. 
And um, the one upside of that Twitter client demise, RIP to both Twitterific and Tweetbot, you were both real ones, is that lots of devs are taking their talents and are making Mastodon clients for various platforms and building other tools tool, which is great. So Ivory from uh, Tapbots, who's the team behind our beloved Tweetbot, it launched this week on iOS and it's excellent but there are some really excellent open source Mastodon tools too. And I wanna give a special shout out to Ice Cubes, which is a fully open source iOS Mastodon client that's just fantastic. And to Elk, which is a great Mastodon front end for the web that makes it um, a lot more like the Twitter website before the Twitter website became kind of terrible. Even better, I asked my followers on Mastodon for some other great Mastodon projects on GitHub, and I did search this myself, and I've put together a list in my GitHub Stars um, collection with a bunch of projects, which I'll be adding to over time, but I've got stuff for taking screenshots at the, from the command line, some great Android apps, uh, some tools for doing Mastodon embeds, a couple of browser extensions, just lots of stuff. And so if you've been curious about Mastodon, but you haven't checked it out, or if you were like me, and you checked it out a few years ago and, and even a couple months ago, I encourage you to give it another look, if only for the really vibrant dev community that's really starting to take off in a new way right now. Super exciting. So I've got links to all that stuff down below and you can follow me at mastodon.social slash at film underscore girl. I'm gonna be on Twitter until it completely dies, but I am committed to spending a lot of more time on Mastodon too because it's really turning into a great place. In some great web framework news, Astro 2.0 was released this week. So Astro is a web framework that we've talked about before, and it's designed to be performant, especially for content-focused websites. It's Yes, it's another JavaScript uh, framework, but this one um, is, is really great to use, especially, again, like I said, for those content-focused sites. And the 2.0 release has complete support for type safety in Markdown and MDX um, modules, and it also includes features like, a hybrid, uh, like hybrid rendering so that you can have both static and dynamic sites, like, the site can do both, I'm stoked about that. It's redesigned error overlays, an improved dev server, and Vite 4.0 support. So I've got links to the team's announcement blog and their GitHub repo down below. You can also try out a new project in your browser at astro.new, which is really cool. So congrats to that team. It's now time for our new GitHub project spotlight. And this time that name is extremely apt and I promise the pun was not intended. So my boss, Martin Woodward, who's the VP of developer relations at GitHub, and he's an all around great guy and maker, created a really great guide for anyone who wants to build their own 3D printed octo lamp. And if you followed GitHub on social platforms, you might have seen some of our very limited edition OctaCat LED lamps. And we would love to be able to give those to everyone the supply chain has made that a little bit difficult. But you know what's cooler than buying one? Building one of your own. And this is what Martin has done. So his GitHub repo has all the steps. It's powered by WLED. It's compatible with Home Assistant, and it's awesome. You just need to 3D print some parts, solder in the controller, and, and use the software. It's great. Martin, thank you for this great project. If you do make a lamp using Martin's repo, please share it with us on Twitter or Mastodon, here on YouTube, wherever. I love it. And now it's time for my pick of the week. So, as a 90s kid, one of my very favorite games growing up was GoldenEye 007 for the Nintendo 64. It was actually the very first first-person shooter I ever played. Uh, it had a great multiplayer mode, um, Easter eggs, you know, fun puzzles. I honestly don't even know how many hours I spent playing this game, but it was a lot. Well, for lots and lots of reasons, which are mostly related to licensing, we haven't been able to play this game officially since the 90s. But starting tomorrow or today when you're viewing this, okay, starting January 27th, let's just say that, that finally changes. GoldenEye 007 is now available for the Nintendo Switch and the Xbox One and Xbox Series S and X. The Xbox version is actually in 4K um, and remastered and it's kind of the, the Xbox team like rebuilt the game. The Switch game is using like the original, you know, game from, from um, 97 and you can use it with the Nintendo 64 Switch controller. I love it. GoldenEye is, is one of those games for, you know, like elder millennials like myself and some older fans too that just really resonates with us. It's like one of the generational games. I'm super, super excited to be able to play it again this weekend on my Switch and my Xbox. Um, let me know, you know, your thoughts, your memories of GoldenEye. For people who are under 30 who are wondering like why it might be a big deal, it was basically like Fortnite before Fortnite. So it's cool. You can now check it out too. Um, I, I would give it a shot and uh, I'm super excited to finally have this, this game released again. 
That's gonna do it for me. If you liked this episode, go ahead and give us a like on YouTube. It helps the algorithm. Also go ahead and subscribe to GitHub for all your nerd needs. And let me know in the comments, uh, you know, like some of your favorite Mastodon tools, your favorite games from the 90s, comments on any of our other stories. Thank you again for 100 million developers. Again, like I said, we couldn't do this without you. Super exciting. That's gonna do it for me. See you next time. Thank you.